Okay, so moving on to a real life example, some of you were very eager to know what is happening in the world and I will share my experiences with uh, a project which I did long, long back at uh, NTPC Korba. Uh, I am sure you must be aware of uh, what is happening at Korba. Uh, NTPC is the main unit over there and they produce lot of uh, electricity for the country. But when they produce electricity for the country, at the same time they are producing a lot of fly ash also and uh, it is a big question that how to uh, deal with this fly ash in a better way. Now what I am going to talk about here is not the fly ash but the coal which is used to run these four units of NTPC and I was involved by an Australian company here uh, which were running the coal wash hill. So, if you see from a distance, uh, this is the NTPC plant and a lot of emissions are taking place in the environment and of course, they may say that everything is safe because now they might have put back filters in the or the dust collection systems to clean up the emissions. I intentionally took this photograph, uh, I wanted to show you this is a railway bridge through which the railway uh, you know uh, wagons are moving, uh, the train is moving. And in the background if you see that there is a big hill which have been created by human activities. And these hills are several in numbers in the Raipur Korba regions because uh, these are the mining overburdens which we were discussing long time back. This could be the stack of the coal which is unused, which is not of the good grade to get incinerated easily. You know, we were talking about uh, the calorific value of the coal, hardness of the coal, alright. So, if the coal is not of good quality, there is no point in taking it to the industry because it cannot be incinerated, it will not provide you proper energy. So, one of the concerns is that the height of these hillocks which are man-made is increasing and we have discussed this in details. Uh, this is how they store. Uh, the washery residues. These are coal residues which have been stacked in multi-layer system and the mandate given to me was how to utilize these materials because unless you create a storage space, the coal which is coming out of the open cast mining cannot be you know generated. So, these are the residues from a closer picture you will realize that uh, I am quite at a height, uh, it must be about 35, 40 meter high where these type of road system is created to bring the coal residues after washing and to stack them over here. So, this becomes a multi-tier system. This is a typical open cast mine. This is one typical man-made mountain overburden which has been created at a quite distance from the mine and if you see from this point onward, this is the ground and from here the cutting has started and this is the first seam of the coal and so on you have created benches of the coal and this is how the coal is extracted, it is a co open cast mining. We are doing a project right now at uh, Bhanegaon in Nagpur, it is a very challenging project which I was discussing yesterday in the discussion that the more deeper you go, the big issue is how to stabilize the slopes of the granular material which could be 40, 50 meter high and unless you stabilize this, the mining operation cannot be done. Now, there are several challenges. So, as I said long back, it is not only the mining engineers domain it's mostly geotechnical engineers domain and they give you all sorts of guidelines and we are trying to work on this problem. Apart from this, the biggest issue is this being a sedimentary deposit and the river bodies or the surface uh, water being very nearby, this water discharges into the mines and hence uh, it becomes very difficult to do the stability analysis of the, of the cuts because of excess seepage. There is another close look of you know how the benches have been created, how the coal is being taken out 
and imagine what my intention was at one side you are doing mining, you are going extra deep inside the ground, on the other side you are creating mountains of overburdened material, both are hazardous, but mining has to be done for the sustenance of the nation. How long you will be bringing coal from other countries and you are losing on lot of ex foreign exchange. So, incidentally uh, what I have shown over here is that uh, this is the agricultural land and then idea was to utilize the millions of tons of the coal residues to create some infrastructure. It is a good example of how coal residues get stacked at the uh, coal washery unit. Washing of coal is a chemical process, sometimes you have to wash it with acids, sometimes you might have to treat it with uh, different type of steam curing, sometimes you have to give a treatment of different chemicals to get rid of impurities in the coal and so on. One thing you should realize is that today's geotechnical engineering is not mastering only one subject because then the problems become very, very limited and scope of your activities becomes absolutely limited. Instead, what society wants and looks up at you is they want a solution of the problem. So, you have to learn in the process a lot of subjects and their concepts so that you can give a good solution. So, you have to learn a lot of chemical processes, why coal is a residue you know you have to ask these type of questions when you go to the sites and meet people before you can solve the problem. Because ultimately the question is how to utilize this material which is of no use to the washer. So, unless I have created a similarity between this material and the natural aggregates which are existing, I cannot go ahead with the solution. This is how it looks, he is Dr. Naidu, one of my PhD scholars who is a faculty now at IIT Chennai and the next one is. Dr. Kole, who is now a faculty member at uh, University of Carbondale, close to Chicago. Uh, so, these are the people who are associated with this project and this gives you a very clear idea about, you know, the washery somewhere here, you are stacking the coal residues and this is the road which I was talking about to take the material to create a second flight of the storage. So the huge areas like there will be in few acres of land and the heights would be, this level itself is about 20 meters and then each of the flights would be 10, 10, 15, 15 meters and so on. Imagine the magnitude of the problem, this is one of the coal washeries in the country. I hope you can realize now the magnitude of the problem. Had it been a soil embankment, I would not have bothered much about it, but this is carbon material, is it not? The chances of this material catching fire during summers are tremendous methane formation is taking place because coal, so flash point is there, organic material and you are stacking it like this, it is a hazard to store this material in your premises, clear? It could be inflammable and hope you can realize from the size of this car, what is the height of the slope we were talking about. Now the question is what you are going to do with this material. Another beautiful picture of you know how do they manage the storage areas and how do they create uh, further storage of the materials. So, you have to learn all these things, management of the heaps of industrial byproducts and the waste material which is coming out. Another picture, I wanted to show uh, the man-made system like uh, you know coal washery residues on which uh, Dr. Kohle is standing. In the background you can see the man-made hillocks overburden, when you remove the top soil and you stack it somewhere and look at the whole area. This is a plain area uh, near Korba, but it looks like a very hilly terrain because most of these are made up by mining activities. I hope the statement of the problem is clear to you and the importance of the problem is clear to you. Now, if geotechnical engineers cannot solve this problem, who else will be solving? This is a big question. Only thing is the material has got changed. You have been doing slope stability analysis of silty frictional material, C5 type of soils or sandy soils, clear? Here the material has been changed, the rest of the problem remains same. So, that is another view. So, this is just to tell you what 
the solution was. Uh, if you see this is the valley of the land, you know this is the existing ground level and this is the formation level for the railway track which they wanted to construct. So in nutshell they just wanted to create a railway siding so that the operations become simple. But soil is not available in the nearby area and what you have is the industrial byproduct. And now the question is can I use this industrial byproduct which happens to be coal washery residue to create an embankment on which railways can lie. So if you reanalyze these results you will see that the height of the filling which was required to get this gradient of the formation for railways to ply was about 16 meters, huge height, clear. And in the process uh, we consumed about 6 to 10 million tons of the residues, it is a substantial amount. The rest of the things are simple, I mean you do slope stability analysis, but the question is from where you will get parameters. We were discussing some time back, somebody asked what software is being used. So software could be the same. But the question is now the soil has been replaced by the coal residues. So you have to perform all the tests on coal residues to get their fundamental properties, unit weight, density, compaction, flakiness, all right. And then uh, water absorption capacity, impact, durability and so on, all right. You have done all these tests. Apart from all this series of the conventional tests, what you have to think about is ignitability. It may, it may get ignited because of fire, migration of methane gas into it, degradation of the material. Soils are less prone to degradation as compared to the organic matters like coal, all right. So I am sure you must be realizing now the conventional subject has been topped with a lot of interesting questions, how would you model the material properties. Then substitute those properties and give a solution. So this is the first cross section which I tried to work on. But what I realize is that if I have to cut off the coal residues which are encased over here, I have to use lot of native soil and as I said native soil is not available because no villager is going to give you the soil for creating a bank, they lose the land, that too fertile land. So this did not work out. So what we did, we kept on increasing the volume of the coal residues which can be packed in the embankment and reduce the cover of the native soil. But still you know people are greedy. So when they saw that this type of solution worked, they said why do not you increase the CR volumes and reduce the native soil further. But I am sure now you will realize that this is a railway track. So most of the impact loading is going to come on the coal residues and they are fragile materials as compared to soil. So if there is no sufficient cover, what is going to happen? There will be an impact induced degradation of the material. You must have studied in your transportation engineering course. So you have to provide proper cushion so that the CR does not degrade because of the railway impact. But there has to be a sufficient amount of uh, native soil cover so that the free supply of oxygen to coal residues gets cut off. Otherwise what will happen? They will degrade very fast and there is something known as you know methane formation because of decomposition of the coal. So these are the challenges I hope you are realizing, uh, though the problem is very simple, but when you have to start doing this from the point 0, it becomes challenging. So this I did in very early career and uh, from here I learnt all these adjectives which I use now in my professional career, degradability, durability, clear, applicability of the material. So all these series started when we were working on this problem. Of course, the client was very happy when I gave him this final solution that you can use so much volume of the uh, material in the as an embankment followed by a very thin layer of the soil which is required to make a good embankment. So I hope you can realize that this is how the engineering can be done and when you are giving a solution, what changes is? the way of looking at the material. So similarly I remember I did another project near Velarpadam in Kerala where I did lot of things. So my material got changed but I created a complete bypass for the entire Cochin city and this entire material came from the sea. Now this is the engineering and technology which cannot be taught in one day.
So, you have to sit down, you have to learn, analyze and then think of a solution.